Hey there! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use Scatter to produce basic patterns for your materials. I'll be uploading all the files I'm using in my tutorials, so if you want those, just check out the link in the description. It's the first tutorial in the series about Scatter, so while I'm still assuming a basic knowledge about the note editor, we're going to start it with an easy example and then get more advanced in the following videos. If you have not seen the presentation video about Scatter, you should probably watch that one first. I use the Node Wrangler add-on by Greg Zahl. If you're not familiar with that, look it up, install it immediately, it will change your life, it's that amazing. Alright, we start with a fresh blend file. The first thing to do is of course to delete the default cube and load in Scatter. We do that by pending from the Scatter blend file under Node Tree and then Scatter Append. Now we can add in a plane and give it a new material in the shader editor. Always name your materials accordingly to stay organized. For basic patterns, it's best to use the component single scatter. It's the heart of scatter and has other applications than its final form. When I add it to the node tree, you can see that it uses the same parameters as the main node, but it gives you coordinates as the main output. That's because it's a single iteration of scatter and it's not able to overlap with itself. Getting the vector output is very useful though. That way we can just route this output into our textures and don't have to bother with the ID system. So let's load in some pictures of fruit that I painted. It gets an orange and the banana. Ah, uh, yeah, that's all the fruit I could think of. So here you go. Now we could just use the grid that the scatter gives us, but let's go with a pattern more fun. I want to create a pattern like this, where these are the bananas and these are the oranges. Okay, how do we achieve that? We have to get a second instance of scatter and offset the coordinates like this. We can just duplicate the node with Shift D and label both so we don't get confused later. Also, we want both to have the same division, so let's add a value input and plug it into both their divisions. Let's take a look at that. Okay, it looks pretty messy. We should use the alpha as well as the clipping information to get the result we wanted. We can simply multiply the alpha mask with the clipping mask. That leaves us with isolated alpha masks. Now those can be used as the factor in some color mix nodes. Next we add in our base coordinates, which will be UVs in this case. And now we have to do just a little bit of vector math. If you haven't faced the concept of vectors in Blender yet, here's how your Vs work. Vectors in Blender are represented by the colors red, green and blue accordingly to the components X, Y, Z, in that order. When we look at the UV map, we can see that the values of red and green increase along the axes from 0 to 1. These coordinates hold the information where our image texture gets mapped to. Now, in order to shift the point of 0 to the center, we have to subtract 0.5 on the x and also 0.5 on the y axis. But we have to keep in mind that our UVs are getting divided, so we only want to shift our coordinates by, in this case, one tenth of that. To do that, we simply subtract the color 0.5, 0 0.50 and use for the factor 1 divided by the division. Okay, now we're all set with the coordinates, so let's plug in those maps and see what we get. Let's now choose a classy cyan background color, and there you go. As a final touch, let's add a little bit of random rotation. As you can see, as I increase it, the average of the random rotation also changes. To counter that effect, we can just offset the rotation of all the fruit by minus the average of that random rotation, which is half of the value that we put in. Let's add a few more math nodes to get this all under one single input. We should also adjust the size of our individual fruit. Perfect. Now we have a beautiful fruit pattern that we can slap onto ties, cars, fingernails, eyeballs. The possibilities are endless, frankly. Okay, that was the first tutorial in the series. Please do feel free to go completely crazy on the patterns you create and yeah, 
I guess I see you in the next video. Bye.